The Fire Within by Krista Lacey. We're now on page 206. Do Not Disturb. The following day, the rain had slowed to a tolerable drizzle, and David did get away to college. Not that he really got much done. He played foosball with a couple of friends, collected an essay from the department office, and attended a lecture on global cooling in something called the Pleistocene Age. It could have been snowballing in the Pleistocene Age. His mind wasn't much on geography at all. It was lost in Snigger and the Nut Beast. In total contrast to the previous day, his mind had been buzzing with ideas all morning, so much that by mid-afternoon, he skipped the camera club meeting and practically sprinted home from college. Throwing his coat on a hook, he dived into his room, started his computer, and quickly reopened the Snigger file. Chapter 8, he typed, Conquer Found. Yes, this was it. He could feel the creative excitement building. Sense the ideas flowing again. He could feel dunk the weight of the tabby cat landing in his lap. Not now, bonkers. Not now, bonkers. With an effortless swing, he lobbed the cat underarm onto the bed. No interruptions, David warned him, just as he heard Liz shout, Lucy, can you come into the kitchen, please? Lucy up and about again? She m really must be avoided. Grabbing an orange felt-tipped pen, he scribbled out a message on a large scrap of paper and taped it surreptitiously to the outside of his door. Shortly afterward, Lucy clomped downstairs her... Footsteps halted outside his room. Mom, David heard her say, what does do not disturb mean? More footsteps announced Lucy's presence in the hall. It looks to me like a note written in haste by a person who would not appreciate another person busting into his room right now, even if she knocked extremely politely. But the rain stopped. That means the person can go squirrel hunting. No, said Liz, her voice growing fainter as she moved toward the kitchen. It means that one particular person is going to help her mother hang out some laundry. Oh, but my dragon pox is really bad now. Lucy, don't lie. Get the clothespins. Lucy's voice trailed off with glum sounding, Oh... David clenched his fists in triumph and swung his chair around to face the computer. Within minutes, he had typed his opening paragraph. At last, the rain had stopped hammering on the watering can. Snigger woke with a start and crept toward the light. He poked his whiskers out of the hole. The world dripped with the scent of warm, moist air. Sparrows twittered, trees rustled in the breeze, an eager spider was spinning its web between the handle of the can and the spout itself. Snigger took a deep and nervous breath. He knew that the time had come, the time to make the dangerous journey to the nut box. He reversed his body back into the can and gently nudged Conker awake. We're in business, David said to Gedzooks. Gadzook stared silently into the garden where Liz and Lucy were hanging out the laundry. David's fingers flew across the keyboard. With every sentence, every word, the two squirrels moved closer to the penny kettle's garden. Snigger led the way to the garden fence. 
He quickly found the panel with the hole at the bottom and anxiously waited for Conker to catch up. The one-eyed squirrel was limping badly. His thin gray body, weak with hunger, was barely able to drag along the ground. As he reached Snigger's side, he almost collapsed. Leave me, he whispered. Please, get away. You're in danger, too, if Carcat... Caraticus comes. At the moment, at the mention of that name, every hair, at the mention of that name, every hair on Snigger's body bristled with fear. But from somewhere deep within, he found the courage to say, no, we're going together. And he nudged Conker headfirst through the hole. Get the support, please. David paused and glanced into the garden. Liz was hanging out a red wool sweater. The line was almost filled with laundry. He watched Lucy bring the clothes support over and saw the clothes hoisted like a row of flags. Wondering what a squirrel would make of that, he turned his fingers to the keyboard again. What's that? said Snigger, following Conker through the hole. Conker looked up with his one good eye. A line of clothes was flapping in the breeze. Don't know, he shrugged. 